Okay, so I'm supposed to speak English, and I will do. Um, my voice is a little, bit, little bit tight because uh, I've been partying too much yesterday. So I will need you to help me with some energy. Um, let's, let's do some checkup. If you are happy about what I say, what do you do? That's kind of okay. Uh, if you think I'm, I'm a, a large troll and uh, saying bullshit, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, that's cool. Uh, so we are going to talk about, re about React Native. So first about me. Uh, I'm an Android developer first, and uh, I've been doing a lot of iOS code too uh, in my work life. And uh, who here has had, has had to maintain um, from side to side an Android and an iOS app? Yay, so you will love React Native. Um, and I'm also now the founder of, of JeCherchandel.fr. So in English, it means findthedev.com, basically. And I have this domain name, too. And uh, so what we do is trying to uh, remove the noise on the, hiring, on, the, on the developers hiring and select only great uh, companies that you want to work with, with them. You just have to create an anonymous profile, and you will get uh, introductions request from, uh, from uh, hiring people, and all those requests have been approved by my team. Cool? Okay. So uh, I made a demo app, so you can test the look and feel of React Native on your phone. But I think the last update is not uh, available on the store, so what I offer you is to download it from Google Drive, and you have this UL shortener. Want a minute to do it? Yay. <coughs> so we'll have some water. So it will be mainly uh, code during this session, but I will have a few slides to begin with, and after this we will have some code, and if you have some idea or feature you want to try to implement in, a, in less than 10 minutes, we'll have time for that. Cool? Cool is like a keyword, you know? So at the end of any sentence I say cool, you have to say, yeah. Cool? Yeah. Okay, cool. Everybody got it? Nope. <laughs> Yay? You ever got it? Cool. So what's the pain point? Basically, we hate web views. Uh, I, I s we still have web views in large apps uh, because there is some part of the apps you want to be able to deploy without deploying on the stores. So maybe uh, if you're in a retailer, you will have the checkout, which is still a web view. You will have reg registration process that are web views. And maybe like, I'm, I don't know, like funnels and things like this that are web views and that are keys. And we ate them, okay? Who like who is l loving web views? Okay, well, I, I wanted to be sure about it. Uh, Sometimes also uh, you are, you will have to maintain the same part of the app, like very similar part of the app, like profiles, uh, settings, and things like this, on both Android and iOS. And this sucks. I hate to do the same code twice, and it, especially because it's a, it's the same feature feature, but you have to implement it twice in a different way because it's iOS and Android. So this is a pain. Also, we use web views from time to time because we have to render some HTML content, and it's still a good idea, but not that much. Um, you think JavaScript sucks? Who is, who is agreeing with this? Okay. Actually, JavaScript is not that bad. What sucks is browser fragmentation. I mean, web developers use JavaScript that sucks because they are using browsers. And there is like a lack of support of modern JavaScript in most browsers. So they need to use uh, an old one, or they use polyfill, something like this. But at the end of the day, their code sucks because the browser sucks. When you do React Native, you're not coding for a browser. You're coding for a specific interpreter of JavaScript, so you can use the latest features. OK? And modern JavaScript is neat. I, I put a parrot on every slide. So. <laughs> Um, you might think that uh, React Native is just another framework for web developers to, to build some native apps. But it's not. I mean, if you are a web developer, you are going to have a very bad time because you still have to go to Xcode. You still have to go to Android Studio. You need to know what uh, an Android manifest is. And if you are an, a web developer, this is going to be a very bad time. But if you are a native developer, and you are going to, you are going to love a little bit, uh, to, to learn a little bit of JavaScript, but at the end of the day, you will be learning much faster than a web developer. Okay? 
I mean, there is no CSS, there is no divs, there is nothing from the web in React Native. It's not ionic. Oh yeah, I have a slide about this. So, <laughs> this is not about Cordova. I mean, we, th there is nothing uh, in common during co uh, between Cordova and React Native. These things are totally different. There is no web view in React Native. And we, I'm not going to, to talk about whether Cordova is great, better than React Native. This happens a lot, and I don't want to do it today. <coughs> you might think that cross-platform cross sucks. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't think uh, you are going to use React Native to do cross-platform apps. I mean, you are going to use React Native just because it's a good, tr it's a good, uh, it, it's a good tool, and uh, when you are, you will be able to use it in an efficient way. You will understand when to use React Native for such a feature, when to use native code for such a feature, because you are very, um, it's very flexible as a technology. So you can do most of your app using native code, and uh, at a, at some point uh, decide that this feature is not very important, and you would jo just want to deploy it using React Native. Okay, cool. Okay, so what's React Native? Um, basically, React is like a rendering mach machine, a rendering engine. It takes a JS script where you describe what you want to out output as a view, and you it's building a browser DOM, okay? And with React Native, <whistles> but elimination, the rendering machine is going to render some Android native UI or iOS native UI. And you are going to tell him, I want views, I want text views, I want this. And it's going to render everything as native UI components. OK? So it's, it feels like a native because it is, actually. You are going to use an actual list view. You are going to use an actual navigation controller on iOS. OK? Cool? We'll see, we will see this with code. <coughs> what you should know before starting. So uh, React is only the V from MVC. Okay, it's, it's not like a full framework, it's not full featured, it's only a rendering engine, and you don't have anything outside of this, out of the box, actually. And actually, you don't need an MVC for most tasks, task, because you're going to use Redu Redux, as that allows you to like, uh, do some reactive co coding, and the Red Redux is going to solve, or actually, like, it's like the controller in the, in the reactive architecture. You have seen some Eric Java film before? You know what is reactive prog programming? Programming. Okay, so Redux is going to be like the C uh, you are looking for MVC. Um, React Native is still pre-release 1.0, so there is still breaking change. But most of the time in the documentation, you can foresee that this this is going to break. Uh, like there is navigations uh, components, and there is navigations experimental components. So you know that the navigation components are going to be, de be depreciated and that the navigation comp experimental components are not working yet. So you don't have any navigation component actually. But it's pretty much clear. OK? OK. <laughs> you need to be like, like a, lit a little, bit, little bit more reactive with me, like reactive programming, actually. So if I say OK, <laughs> thank you. <coughs> so the layout is similar to Flexbox. It's not actually Flexbox, but it's very similar to Flexbox. That makes it easy, like if you're, um, for example, as a developer, I hate to do UI code. Uh, I'm really bad at this, I, my, my UI is always ugly. So I always need somebody else that is great at this to do it. Uh, we call them integration people on the web. We don't have such skills in the, in, on mobile. We think that every developer should be great at UI. So on, the, on some project I did for a client, uh, I hired another guy who is a great integrator on the web and doing some flexbox and responsive uh, coding on the web and he did all the integration on, uh, on my React Native app. And uh, it was actually very efficient. Like I did something like 16 days of coding and he did four days of, of integration. I was like throwing all the components on the UI and he did something really beautiful, very similar to what was uh, uh, on the, um, I don't know, cahier des charges. Say it. <coughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you are going to use Buck for building if you are doing React Native first apps. So if your app is totally React Native, you won't have to use Gradle. Is that cool? <laughs> you like Gradle? I don't understand. 
<laughs> so slow. Uh, you are going to be able to use code push. So it's a, it's a solution by Microsoft. And it allows you to, um, so that GS file, that G GS script that is doing all your app code, you are able to store it on the web and uh, in the cloud. And when your user is going to use the app, the GS code is going to be updated straight from the cloud, so you always have the last version. And if you want to update your GS script, you don't have to push on the store, you just have to put a new one on the cloud. And from time to time, you will do a release on the, on the Play Store, and the user, the user will have the last one uh, loaded. Is that okay? Yeah. Yay. Cool. <coughs> there is, it's still very like new, and there is new things every day. Like uh, React XPay is uh, XPay. I don't know if you say this like this, but uh, it's Microsoft that uh, will release that. If they want you to be able to use React on the web and React na native uh, for mobile apps and do cross-platform apps in, uh, uh, just in one time, I don't know why they would do that, but they like the idea. Uh, there is also a lot, a lot of great component being released by Airbnb. Like React Native apps is really mainstream right now. And uh, native na native na navigation uh, is a na kind of navigation system, like a router uh, offered by uh, by Airbnb. There is also one uh, offered by Wix, that is really mainstream right now. And uh, I recommend you to use uh, GS Coach to identify which packets are mainstream and which packets are not, because there is a lot of NPM, NPM packets, and most of them are useless or may maybe even broken, because React Native is like there is a new release every month. And so you will find some packets that are seven months old and they are not working anymore. Okay? Cool? Okay. Um, so that's the setup. So let's see some code. So first of all, you want to see, okay, I need to change something first. Let's go. Small. <coughs> so we have. So this is a demo you can find on, on my GitHub. And uh, so we have several apps on this one. So for example, you can use Atom to do some ja JavaScript coding, and you will be able to use uh, Nuclid, which is like um, an, they call Facebook calls that an ADE, but it's more like a plugin for your, uh, for your Atom. That is going to be very React compliant, OK? And you have several apps on this repo. You will have a React Native first app. So this is it's this one. So in a React Native app, you see it there, you will find like all your so sources, it's your JS code like this, okay, JavaScript code, and you will have an iOS app. It's a brand iOS app, so it's just a kind of sh an empty shell. It's just loading the, 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 the React Native code, <coughs> and you are going to deploy it. And you have the same thing with an Android app there. And if you want to look at the code, this is like, and a React activity, pretty much dummy to, to use. And uh, a main, the main application is just loading all the packages. So for example, uh, in, this, uh, in this sample, I'm using uh, I18M, I don't know in English. And uh, it allows us to uh, manage many translations, OK? So you, will go, you are going to add every, uh, like, outside li libraries. They, they might be even Gradle modules uh, just at this point. OK, cool? So, okay, okay, Google. <laughs> so we launch Visa and show you that. Okay. So first thing you need a packager. So the packager is pretty much easy. You do React Native start. Okay, this is not the wrong. This is not the good one. React Native demo. LS CD React Native first. So you are going to start React Native. Okay, we have some ads. React Native start. Okay. So this is going. <laughs> okay, Google. Uh, this is going to start a packager. Okay, and the packager is going to uh, how to say? Uh, is going to live build uh, all the JS code I'm going to change in my uh, in my Atom. And uh, every time my, uh, my application is going to check it, it's going to load the, the, the code from ADB. OK? So now, if I want to launch on iOS, I just have to do React Native run iOS. And this is breaking a lot because it's using Xcode. 
So don't worry, maybe it's not going to work. That's going to be fun. <coughs> React message below. Okay, so a start uh, uh, another package st is starting is there. Um, there is a simulator running there, and I know I, uh, I don't know if it's going to work or, or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's a mood question. I can also launch React Native run Android to have it on Android, and both of them are going to listen to the same package as there. So it's working great, great. So we have this app, okay, and we have navigation inside. So we have a back there. And um, we have a state there in the Redux container. Okay, so if I go back, this component has also no, the same number of Earths. <coughs> cool. And for example, if you want to use the, this kind of things, this is another part, uh, another package in React, allowing me to uh, start uh, to open a link. Okay, and this is a native part. So I'm using the same code to open a link, like this. So if I want to look at the JS code, I'm going to the scenes. Scenes are basically like activities or fragments, but they are neither an activity, neither a fragment, neither a controller from iOS. They are like something else. And uh, if I have from a scene, so this is how you do uh, a linking can open a URL, this, this kind of things. And this, this is the API you are going to use in React Native is neither iOS, neither Android. It's only React Native, and it's going to work on both of them. So if at some point, first, so this is bug running, OK? First time is slower. And you can see it's, uh, it has been doing some ADB reverse TCP. Uh, so my app is going to be able to connect to the packager. OK? If you have any question, we have time, OK? So everybody, everything is going. And the last few percent are going to be very long because we are going to load. So the main difference between React Native and uh, Cordova and other things uh, is that you don't have to embed a web view things or um, maybe your Xamarin uh, engine, um, object engine. So uh, this kind of APK is only seven megs. You, are, you have an empty app and it's pretty much empty. Okay, so it's running and I will be able to see it in visual. Okay, so I have the same thing. I think I did some translation. Oh yeah, great. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even knew that. Okay, no, it's not translated. And this is going to work the same. And this is the same uh, JavaScript code working on both platforms. Is that cool? Yes. So now, you have an Android app. So this is another package called Android First. We can find it there. Android First. And you have, you have it in Atom uh, there. So I have it there, React Native, Android First, here. So I have my I, I, what I did is load a sample uh, like a boilerplate from from Android Studio, okay, and I added uh, some views that are Android uh, that are React Native inside of it, okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so I added some uh, some React Native source React Native folder, and I have this pretty much the same code in it, okay. And uh, I have a flow config because we are type checking everything with flow. I did not say that in the slides. And I added some readme to explain you how I came to that. Okay. So what we are going to do is in in the app. Okay. So in uh, the build Gradle app, Android first, the project one, we are going to add a Maven repository which is binded to my node modules. So I'm going to do some yarn install get all the de dependencies and bind them using a lo local Maven repository, okay? And in the app, I'm going to add React Native there and specify uh, some version of it. And it's going to fetch it in my node modules locally, okay? And eventually, 
this can be useful to, oh no, I have to do some gradle sync again. And uh, this can be useful to uh, add some NDK restriction, but not all the time. Okay. So in, uh, in your app, wow, so many things. You have this hello activity. So maybe we should run it first so you can see it. So this is the app you say loaded from drive um, earlier, okay? <laughs> I'm on battery and I'm running right at all. Not working, going to work right. We would need some music for Gradle building. <coughs> Gradle's building. Now there's full process running. It's not working that great. Maybe I should sideload it from Google Drive too. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, pop, pop, pop. Have an APK. Uh, yeah, demo APK. Success. There we go. So this part is native, okay? And I, you can find it there. I saw something. <laughs> For sure. Start it again. So in the hello activity, we are going to, to load some uh, XML, usual layout from XML, okay? And we are going to bind to uh, this activity, the Kirker one, okay? So the Kirker is there. And it requires you to, to do some overlay. Um, we are going to launch it back again. So this part is, is native. And for sure, I don't have the good packager running. So if you are going to do some uh, dev mod, you are going to bind on uh, packager 2. And if you are uh, running an, an Android app first, you are going to launch your packager by doing npm start. So I have a packager running now. I can do a reload. And it's working. So if I do it back, I enter Kirker, and this is React Native. And this is like pure native. And for example, if I do a toast here, this toast is launched by my activity at some point. It's not launched by the React Native part. It's, it's launched by my Android Native part, OK? And I can still use Next. And this navigation is handled by React Native. It's the same than before, than earlier, OK? And again, I can do the Kirker, and the state is managed. I don't have the backend link. And the state is going to be managed inside of the JS code, OK? And I still have my uh, binding to the linking component. We don't need to open it every time. And if I go awesome, so this is another activity. If I not to burn everything. This is another activity, this one. So the mixy activity. And what I'm going to do is uh, to use a frame layout, OK? Like this one, like this one, and I'm going to uh, add as a child to the to the frame layout my React view. So basically, this code is pretty much simple. You need to bind your React instance manager to um, uh, to the application, pretty much because in your application you are going to have a React Native host uh, with all your uh, your native plugins. So for example, my awesome package is some package I did to add the toast module. And this toast module, we'll talk about it later. And uh, things like this. So this is how you are going to load the, um, uh, the JS file from your assets when you are not in development mode. You're in production mode, you need to have it built. And this is where you're going to load it from the, st the package or server, OK? You can also add some package again. And you can uh, bind some developer support. So developer support allows you to check it like this. Ah, you don't see anything. Wait a minute. 
So when I check it, I have this menu, and I can reload, like for example, the JavaScript, and check it again. If you are in a simulator, you can do uh, or, or it's working great. And so, and we are going to do everything like this, pretty much easy, okay? And I have this button which is native, and it's going to allow me to interact with the React Native part. So for this, we are going to use a module. And uh, so if you want to see a module, like the Toast module is pretty much easy. Uh, Toast module uh, is the one allow me allowing me to do this. Because I want to handle the Toast, I will add some uh, constants. So I'm going to expose in JavaScript the constants. Now let me show you that. I'm going to get them back. <coughs> so inside of, Android, um, inside of your JavaScript, you're going to get back the short constants and also lo the long one, okay? And uh, I will also have a React method using this annotation, and I will be able to do the show. So this is pretty much Toast Android show. This is my, the whole module, it's, uh, it's this class, and the at React method explains that I can use it in, in JavaScript, okay? And back, if I want to use uh, this button, so this one, I will also have to send an event, okay? So the mixing module here, still again is going to uh, expose an event because we are going to name the event by string and uh, we are going to have the React method, I don't know why, it's not useful. And we are going to send, so from Kirker, from Mixi activity, we are going to send, so the send Kirker method is there. What you do is get back a current React context, okay? So you have the Rea React instance manager there you are going to light the JS module and going to emi emit the event, okay? And in JavaScript, what you are going to do is there, in component will mount. So in React, all the components, this is a React component, basically, it only have a render method, and this is how you describe uh, some, uh, some UI. You have every, everything that looks like HTML, but it's only a native components, so text, view, buttons. <coughs> And so, for example, when I, uh, if I have the toast uh, feature available, I'm going to, uh, to render the button toast, and uh, if I don't have it available, I will uh, render nil, and it's, going, it's not going to appear. And in the component will mount, it's basically like um, on resume in, act in an activity. I will be able to listen for the mixy Kirker event, and uh, every time I will touch my button, the, this method is going to be called. So, for example, I can add console.log Happy logs. Okay, so this is okay. And I check it. And we are going to debug some GS. So I will have the debugger UI. Okay. And I will enter the awesome again. Yay. They are very happy in the other room. <laughs> okay, so if I do the toast, it's going to work, okay? And I if I use this, I will have the render AP logs there, and I'm even able to debug there, so I, I can add a breakpoint there, so in my method. And every time I've touched the button, it's going to trigger there, and I will be able to do some step-by-step, step, uh, look at uh, the value of this, uh, even um, my console is going to work, so I can do some uh, this dot props. I don't guess I don't have the this binding there, but uh <coughs> 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 I have all the features I can expect. Is it okay for ev for everyone? Do you have any question right now? <laughs> you are very enthusiastic. Uh, so this is basically everything I wanna I wanted to show you. If you have any idea, I have like ten minutes left, so I can show you any kind of feature you if you want. Can do some try to do some live coding. Mm -hmm. I'm still bad bad at UI, but even if so, even if it was in Android, I wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, so doing some complex UI, we said. So let's do something like this. So 
So in my app, I will remove this, okay, and try to render something else. And I can do many things. So you have to import everything you want to use. For example, text, if you want to add a button, you have to import it there. And I can render some something complex like um, uh, I had a view. It sounds like gaming code, I, I know. It's not that funny. And <laughs> I can add some text like hello. We can add a button saying, and also button, I don't like this, buttons, you're going to use the props. So you are going to add a title prop. Yeah, hello. And the on press is required. It's getting laggy. And uh, what could I add to this to make it more complex? How about animation? Animation. I really had such UI things. Mm, I don't know. Do you have some UI people to do that? I don't know. Animation, you can actually do this. Like, let's, let's have a look to React Native documentation. Animation. You have some layout animations, animations there. Oh, I did some things with, for some word clients. They wanted something like a fading. I hate that thing, kind of things. This is going to be pretty much dirty, and I'm not comfortable. Do you have something complex like uh, binding with some some native components? Um, for example, uh, if you want to just pop a map view, you just have to add, add a map view there like this. Let's do this. I'm going to do my own complex things. So I can add a map view there. Mm. So this is not funny because it's only working, going to work on, on Android. And uh, <laughs> they are like, please use React Native Maps by Airbnb instead. We're very enthusiastic too. Uh, <laughs> And this is going to work, but I don't know what uh, what is going it's going to look like. So I'm checking my phone, my phone obviously. He's not really happy right now. <laughs> okay. Until the car car. So I have the hello, my button hello. And it's clearly telling that we shouldn't use maps. I need to do the, uh, the native binding for maps. So I'm going to do it. So what you need to do is go in there and add a package. Uh, RCT maps. Map. It's not included anymore. <laughs> But I can use, I, I would be able to use like the, I can yarn. Uh, native, how do they call it? React Native Maps by Airbnb. I don't know if a yarn install is a great idea over the Wi Fi. Yeah, and for sure it's an ad now. It's working pretty much. Stick with me. <laughs> so once it's going to be working, I will be able to do that and package.
is going to work actually. Cool. We will find it straight away there. So we have to do React Native Link. I think a map is cool. I never did that before. I should have some Airbnb stuff. So I should have it now. That is a good one. I don't have it, so let's do this. I don't want to go there. It's not going to work right. And I won't have any API key. OK, so any other idea that is pretty much easy to implement in 10 minutes? What? Why? Uh, don't you think it would be uh, complex for a team to have uh, alpha of the code in JavaScript and the other half of the code in uh, Android or iOS? Well, I don't think so. Like, um, if you want, if you want only some part of the apps to be in React Native. No, no, uh, no. It, it most of the app, the app is Android first, so I'm, I need to build it using. Um, I need to build to build it using uh, Android Studio. So this is kind of uh, a real Android app, and uh, everything is uh, is native uh, outside of the parts uh, there. So when I go there, I'm loading this this JavaScript module. This is a React module, so this is some base code in in a, in a React Native. I'm loadi loading this, and, uh, and there I'm adding this to the frame layout. So outside of the frame layout, it's Android. It's Android native okay so why uh, remove just a part into another language uh, wha wha what is the point what is the point uh, if you have to maintain like uh, in, in the former company I was working at I had to maintain the iOS app and the Android app so if we have to launch a new feature I have to implement this twice uh, once on Android and once on iOS and I could implement this only once in uh, using uh, using react native and uh, and include this in most apps. This is most how you, m more how you are going to use it most of the time. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I had a question. It's pretty similar to uh, the last question. So I don't wish to learn JavaScript because I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now I'm learning Kotlin. Yeah. Kotlin, which can be transpiled to JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if you have tried it, if you know if there is some successful example of people who try to, to write their whole application in Kotlin, or... Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's worth it. I, I'm not sure. I mean, JavaScript is not that, that hard to learn. 
Uh, I mean, now you have classes. Uh, it's pretty much easy. Like, if you are doing some uh, some rendering, you don't have to learn many things in JavaScript. Uh, you you have this class app. Mm. It's uh, ex external component, and you just have a render uh, method. Um, it's not other than that, and everything there is like what we call GSX. So GSX is basically um, uh, some JavaScript code to uh, to describe your UI. And it's not JavaScript related; it's React related. So you are you are going to learn that more than more than, more than anything. And uh, if you have never done some uh, any uh, any JavaScript, what you have to know is like if you don't know what is going to happen when doing something like uh, so, if you are going to do something like nil, you shouldn't do that. You should always do. Three time equals. If you don't know what is going to happen with two time equals, do three time. Okay. And um, this is basically you have all you have to learn about uh, about JavaScript. <laughs> okay. And you uh, you have class like this. Uh, it's going to work great. Okay. I, I still try because I want to apply my my Kotlin, but okay. Wow. Well, um, you are you are actually going to transpile uh, this JavaScript using Babel then. So you are going like to transpile some Kotlin code from Java to yeah. JavaScript to import this in Java again? That's the idea. <laughs> doesn't look like a great idea, but why not? <laughs> JavaScript is not that hard to learn, you know? It doesn't even compile, so. <laughs> straight, straight, pretty, straight, pretty much straightforward to, to use. So if you want to sum up everything, if you want to think only about something, so the React Native API is neither like Android, neither like the iOS one. It's always React Native API, okay? So for example, when you look at the API for, uh, for, for, for geolocation, uh, the API is more similar to, uh, to what is used by Mozilla as a standard. Uh, if you are going to do some, uh, some HTTP calls, you are going to use Fetch, which is a standard by Mozilla too, but is not supported over all browsers yet. And it's very well supported in, in JavaScript. In, uh, in React Native. It's rather iOS first. Like all the components, they always look better uh, at first on iOS, and then they look great on Android too. Uh, it's not released 1.0 yet, so there is going to be breaking change, and you shouldn't use it like on large scale application um, if, you, if you don't want to, uh, to maintain it. But I guess if you are doing some Kotlin right now, you can do some React Native. Uh, it's very flexible to integrate in your native apps, so you don't have to do a whole app like in Xamarin or in Cordova. You can use like just some part of it and inject some code in it. Uh, you can do some platform-specific code. I didn't show you that, but it's pretty much easy. Like you can uh, just do some tests like platform equal iOS, platform equal uh, Android, free time equal uh, each time. And uh, it's a very dynamic ecosystem, so there is new package all the time. And using the GS Coach is going to help you a lot in finding what, what package are great and what package are not great. Any, uh, any other question? Is that cool? What is CGS coach? Can you some uh, can show you some part of it? Allez au zoo à Lyon, il a écrit n'importe quoi. Hein? Une minute. OK, just une minute. So GS coach is there. So for example, if you are looking for accelerometer, uh, it's going to show you like uh, those, those two package, uh, one is going to work only on iOS, the other one is going to work only on Android, so you can't use both of them. And um, this one has been updated seven months ago, so there are many chances it's not working again, uh, it's, not, it's not working with React Native. RNPM is what I used to link the Airbnb library uh, uh, earlier, and it's now included in React Native, so very good, it's very, um, uh, there is many chances that I this is not going to work. Uh, if you want to use uh, a router or navigation, yeah, some ads. Um, so you have a Flux router, another router there, React router native, and you can see that the popularity. Like I don't know if you see the shadows, I guess, but they are explaining you, uh, explaining you how much download there is and how it's evol evolving. So I never used this one, but it sounds like it's getting m pretty much popular right now. Tu vois, JavaScript, ça te fait stresser. Ah, euh, ce, qui, ce qui est important de comprendre, c'est que derrière, ça reste une scroll view. Quoi. 
Also, so you are going to see a uh, React Native root router based on Redux. Uh, Frisbee, it's also like based on uh, on on uh, fetch, so it's going to help you making calls. You can pretty much do uh, many things. If we can look at the most popular right now, zero minutes, c'est fini. Je suis désolé. À bientôt.